So Leo, you're out here in a Longford Rugby Club, pre-season's in full swing, a few weeks to go, you get your internationals back over the last few days as well. It's a long time since we've been able to speak to you, it was what, early June, end of the URC, how, have, how, how has the summer been and how has pre-season been? Um, summer's okay, yeah, it's never great when you finish. Just okay? When you finish on a loss, you're always like, you have to carry it around for a while. Um, you're always in some level of a planning mode, um, so pre-season would have been would have been planned to a certain extent. Um, with the tests going on in the mornings, you know, so there was five mornings on my on my, all the holidays. Um, there was a plan in place around that, so you know, it was great seeing a lot of guys do well during the course of the summer. Um, and then you're sort of literally when the last test ended, then we have a group coming back in for pre-season the following Monday. So. Um, yeah, the guys worked hard for we had a three-week block initially. Um, had a bit of a break after that, so they've come back in now together. So we've all the full group back now the last little while. Um, so off in Longford, here we are today. Great, great crowd out there today. Um, um, so we're on a bit of a tour around the province. As we all know, COVID has had its challenges, but um, no excuses for us now. So it's, it's important that we get out and about now. And, um, you know, it's... It's great to see some of the young kids floating around, He's watching training and rugby balls in their hand, and uh, we're trying to grow the game as much as we possibly can. You you mentioned there like it was a tough end to the season, and I remember well like that game after that game against the Bulls. You were fairly honest in your assessment of you know what went wrong that day when you had the time to reflect on it, and I presume you watched it back and stuff like that. What do you what do you think when you look back on that game now, or were there things when you look back afterwards when I suppose maybe the heat of the occasion had worn off that you might have might have noticed. Um, yeah, like it's, it's how you manage probably some of the energy flow of of the group. I think is is important. Like you know when you like there was so much work that gets to the point where you're in the final in Marseille, as we all know in the final of Europe, you get down to the last couple of minutes of the game, you're in the lead, you lose the game at the end. Like it's a sickener way to lose, but like it, it just in terms of how that deflates people and you see with some of the teams uh, like all the Irish provinces suffered to a certain extent um, you know that level of disappointment when you lose in Europe and then trying to get yourself back up again um, we had to do it for Glasgow the following week but you know that probably was a bit of a gave everyone a little bit of a false sense potentially as well then you run into a team like a like a Bulls and we were just a little bit off and then you know you, you start to you speed everything up and every, you're trying to do everything at a million miles an hour so um which leads us to that level of inaccuracy during the course of the game. So it's it's things that we've talked about in the past, you know, but then it's when you're in that space again. But again, we talked about it after the game, if you remember, there was the Bulls came with a plan and they're very, very effective at doing it. So um, for us, yeah, like we, we've, we've plenty of things that we will have learned from um, over the course of last season, but now it's just, just got to get back out there and get ready to play our first game. Um, which will be against Harlequins now next week in the Stoop. Um, and then we have our first game of the season, we're away in Zebra, and then we're first game at home in the RDS. So I'll we'll look forward to those days. And it's only the, the last few days that you've had the, the bulk of those Irish internationals come back in. Like at the end of the season, it wasn't really just around Leinster, probably all of the provinces. There was probably just a, there wasn't the greatest feeling just with the way everyone's seasons panned out. But off the back of Ireland winning a test series in New Zealand, is there a kind of a, has it given a bit of a mental boost to not just Leinster probably, but for all the teams just to, to see what those players are actually capable of? Because I think going into that tour, a lot of people were maybe feeling a little bit down on Ireland based yeah. on the way the province of seasons ended. Yeah, well, you could, you know, like it's, you know, if you, if you thought about it, like, you know, when you, all the Northern Hemisphere countries go down to the Southern Hemisphere um, 10, 20 years ago, like it was, it was very hard to get wins. Whereas there was one of the, one of the weeks there was all the, all the Northern Hemisphere teams won the Southern Hemisphere, which is amazing, really, you know, so the same weekend. Um, so that, that just shows you that the, the Northern Hemisphere rugby is getting stronger all the time. Um, competition is growing, so, and it's very competitive here. We talk about it all the time, so um, you come again, particularly, you know, in Europe when you're playing against the top English and French teams, you know, they're they're not far off international teams, so a lot of guys are getting that regular exposure all the time, so. Um, and with the South African teams in particular, like there are four huge franchises joined the URC, so the competition, as I said, like it's 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 right up there now. It's probably stronger than it's ever ever been. So, um, so for us, it's making sure we are as good as we can be, and we got very very close. Um, 
on some of the big days last year. Didn't quite get there. Um, but you know, that's for us just to improve. We just need to get better this year. Um, and that's what we try to go out for pre-season. In terms of just team news at the moment, anyone come back who's managing injuries at the moment? Anyone who's not really on track for... I know the internationals obviously won't be back for the, the very start of the season, but is there anyone who's come back from international duty who's going to be delayed any more than expected or anyone in the wider squad who kind of has carried a knock through pre-season who, who might be struggling to make week one? There's a few guys managing, yeah, like I'm literally trying to think off the top of my head here, like of guys on tour and guys not, but even from some of the guys that were here as in, as in didn't go on tour, they're still managing some various different bits, bits and pieces. But, um, yeah, uh, we, maybe we put something out official there, it's probably easier, because um, there's lots of names running through my head at the moment. <laughs> at the moment. But that's just the nature of the game, yeah. isn't it? There's always some level of run repairs. Um, and, you know, the, the guys that have been on tour, you know, that have played very little, well, some of them will drop back in early part of the season and they get slowly integrated over the few, first few rounds of the season as well. Um, but then, yeah, like, it, as I said, the block is, is inside just the that block of seven games so it's it's pretty critical that we're up and running trying to bag as many points as you possibly can early in the season because you've got seven games um, and particularly with the URC now with travel and playoffs and you know, some of the challenges around that so um, having said that we lost a home playoff game so <laughs> but um, anyway like the, the main thing is to try and get a good start in the season but that's you know the work that we're putting in now so you can see the session there it's you know, lads are moving pretty quickly quite early in the season so or early in pre-season um, and we'll obviously be the game there next week against Quinns to get us get a group ready for it. and just two more questions then for me you mentioned like the the start of the season big block of games it's quite top heavy the URC season with with derbies in the first half of the season are, are you happy for it to be like that to to get the the real meat and drink of you know games like I don't think there's any Irish derbies between any Irish teams in the second half of the season. Are, are you happy to to have it like that, where it's a little bit tougher early on? Yeah, I suppose we always know around Christmas time, um, but like traditionally there would be that building, like you know round six monster game in the Aviva. Um, sometimes you may play a, one of the derby games prior to that, but yeah, obviously we've the, we've Ulster round three, huge game up there, um, Connacht round five, obviously Sharks in between. Um, so yeah, like it's everyone's here, always gearing up. Everyone's recruiting players from you know wherever that is. Um, everyone's improving all the time. So for us, we just need to focus on improving ourselves and trying to present the best versions of ourselves um, very very early in the season. And then just last one for me, I think one of the big arrivals of the summer is a return rather than arrival. But Sean O'Brien, how is how has he settled into life as as a coach rather than a Leinster player? Because I mean, you know, he's been a teammate of probably the, a large chunk of your squad. Um, yeah, it's great. Like Sean, he's a huge personality for starters, um, and he, he was always really going to be earmarked to go into coaching. I think um, you know he was coaching when he was as a, as a player, like f- as a very young player. So then in Tullow, He'd always be down there, whatever Tuesday, Thursday, or whatever they were training on, in the evenings, come back up train. Um, so he was always keeping himself busy, um, and same when he's when he's in London Irish as well. So he's uh, such vast experience from a player point of view. He's naturally got great presence, always had that on-field presence, and for him now it's just how did he pass on some of the gifts that he really had um, onto the next generation of Leinster players. So uh, we're very very lucky to have him back. Closer, Leo, to you there. Yeah. Just Leo, first off, uh, obviously it's your first time since COVID, uh, getting out around these clubs. The, re- the reception you got here in Longford is something special, I'm sure you think that yourself? Um, yeah, no, dude, it's, for starters it's great to be back out and visiting clubs and the lads get a real kick out of it too. There was one of the groups that had a fair bit of driving to do, they're up at Dundalk uh, IT this morning using the gym and then they're getting across to Mullingar, uh, went some back roads with the sounds of it. I was in Ashburn and on to Mullingar from there. Um, and up to here, yeah. So it, it's great, yeah. Um, we're off to uh, Offaly now next. Um, get a bit of dinner there tonight um, and a bit of rest and a leash. Um, so no, it's great. It's really good. Um, tr- deliberately try to pack a lot into a couple of days. Um, and you know, even for me, during the course of the summer, I've uh, been lucky to spend young kids, so we didn't go abroad with them anywhere. So and the weather's been amazing. So uh, I've been out about all around the place. Um, we have an amazing country, we have an amazing province, um, and it's great you know, for some of our 
for, especially for some of the new people coming into the team um, Jason Jenkins Charlie Natsai Andrew Goodman um, Shawnee's a good idea of some of the junior clubs he's a better idea than most um, but for a lot of our you know the people you know, even some of the coaches that, and, and players that have been here for a few years now wouldn't have necessarily had the opportunity as I said COVID has been such a challenge for so many people so to get out and reconnect and you know try and inspire young kids to, to pick up rugby balls in the first place over whatever other take up over other sports you know that's a, that's an important piece for us um, and Jeff like you see some of the clubhouse and the facilities you know the facilities here at Longford uh, are fantastic um, you know even where we were before Mullingar you know state of the art astro pitch as well there so um, yeah that was great to be out of it Indeed how important is it because obviously a lot of things are made in Leinster not just the schools a lot of players come through the junior clubs through, through the regional clubs how important is it to keep that kind of link going that develop that link across the 12 counties uh, well we definitely do need to do more like as in it's, it's you know there's, there's such untapped potential all around the province really is the way I would see it um, amazing to see so many Leinster flags in Longford today as we drive in um, I drove around a lot of Ireland over the course of the summer um, and I'm always curious to see like where there are Leinster flags uh, flying I spent a lot of time in Wexford and there's a strawberry cellar there so outside Bunk Claudia I'm always happy that when I, I pull in to buy my strawberries there and my potatoes um, so yeah but like that's the thing like we you know it's, it's sort of a two way street isn't it like so supporters so uh, there's certain times of the year we, whereas like us Leinster as a professional team needs to get out and about and make, build those connections with supporters because you know so f there's there's a supporter piece but there's also the playing base piece as well and you know having as many kids run around with rugby balls in their hands ideally um, you know make it exciting for them you know and, you know that's the beauty of you know, you see on the whatever it was the, the three Saturdays in uh, July uh, the, the, the Tuesday and the Wednesday the two Mary games whereas you're seeing you know guys that are out there today running around the fields of Longford that were down in New Zealand beating the All Blacks which you know it's an amazing achievement really um, and yeah like for young kids coming in whether they're the boys or the girls uh, they're going on to hopefully have those same aspirations and know that it's something that it's real um, and just on the weather there today, because funny there, because look at your, your trading top down, it's wet after great weather. <laughs> so it's the real feeling now, I know you've been saying about getting the panel back together and the players coming back together. But it's real preparation now that you're going through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, you can see the pro it's a proper session out there. So um, so it's good for everyone to see it, so what it's like and how the different coaches interact on the day. Um, and uh, yeah, no, hopefully, it's, as I said, just it goes some way to... Um, making kids boys and girls a little bit more curious about Ooh, that's something i could aspire to i'll drag a few of my friends along as well exactly. but like the facilities here are unbelievable so yeah it's um, fantastic yeah. just very finally for myself you know, any new players coming into the panel is there any of them that you're expecting big things from them? um well there's a few foreign guys i suppose there's always there's a certain level of expectation there um charlie a very experienced player um, was involved with a very successful Chiefs team went on to play for the All Blacks um, moved to France to Lyon you know we were we looked at him at that stage um, and so I've always had a very close sorry excuse me kept a close eye on what Charlie was doing um, a few things just the way it played out at the end of last season wasn't something that we initially had planned on but just the way a couple of things played out uh, meant to sort of you know the stars aligned I guess uh, Jason then Going back to that South African point in the URC, um, so Jason's come from the Blue Bulls, uh, played for the Springboks, um, big physical presence, and hopefully someone that could add in his own way as well. Um, and then there's some young guys. It's always, you know, we always need to leave space for some of those young guys to come into the senior squad. You saw some of them, even the likes of Joe McCarthy, who was a year two academy player starting off last season, only made his Leinster debut during the Six Nations back in February is on an Ireland tour at the end of the season so that's just one example of some of the young players um, and always we're hoping those guys kick on and we're trying to leave a bit of space for them and if they do kick on then there is the space for them to progress into so um, but yeah it's a good competitive group and that's what we want Just very finally you about Caelan just said to me there that the aim is more medals more trophies under the piece. Is there, I'm sure that's your, your, entire, uh, your entire mantra now 
Um, yeah, but it, there's a certain way you're going about doing it as well. So, you know, that's why you have to try and focus on the performance part more. Um, so that's the day to day, the week in, week out of performing well. Like, so when they turn up, there's proper intent and focus and everything that they do as players and staff as well, because it's a big responsibility. You know, it's a uh, we're very lucky and privileged to do what we do. So. Uh, represent great people and you know that's even for showing the players as you get in about the province um, you know there's some great people out there great people doing you know so much work at grassroots level um, you know they're not you know they're not paid for like as if we're all professionals doing what something that we all really really enjoy so um, but yeah no it's uh, it's a constant it's a constant cycle go back to that virtual circle circle in there that's what it, it is isn't it like so the more interaction we can have, the better and grow the interest and you get the volunteers and turn up on the big days. And like, The big days are made by the fans, aren't they? You know, So if we, we've, we've been, as I said, through the COVID periods where you're playing big days in front of empty stadiums. Like, So you're rattling around these empty stadiums and like we're all questioning ourselves, like, what the heck are we doing here? Like, what's, it's all, what's it all about? It's about, you know, it's the occasion piece, you know, so where you're in packed out stadiums, you're driving, you're seeing people having a good time um, on their way into the grounds and it's the camaraderie, the days out, all that good stuff, family days, friends, um, etc, etc. So, exactly. So hopefully you can provide a bit of that. Thank you.